Arabic learning must be easy. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Luay. Welcome to the lecture number 22 of the Arabic language course on our channel, Academia Dimashok or Damas Academy. Here we go. What shall we do today? So, in this video we will learn about the following. Step number one is the introduction where today we are going to get to know the number 20. In the second step we will learn the letter number 22. And the last part of our lecture is grammar. We will continue in this lecture with the future tense 3. The number 20 we say الرقم عشرون الرقم عشرون or الرقم عشرين الرقم عشرين We will discuss the difference between them in the future. The sort of lam in الرقم is lam shamsiya because the first letter in the word is را. We see now the video. So, ar-ra-qa-mu-i-sh-ru-n or i-sh-ri-n And now, two and zero. Again, Let's continue. Our letter for today is called Kaf. Kaf. The previous letter we met was called Qaf. Qaf. But this one is called Kaf. So be careful with the pronunciation. The Kaf is roughly written by drawing two lines at 90 degrees with the addition of a Hamza inside. There is the, an explanatory video that clearly shows how to write the kaf. So, as we learned in our series that the letters have different forms, the letter kaf has three forms, namely how to write it at the beginning of the word, middle or end of the word. We will see the way how to write them in the following examples. And now the video. Harf kaf Harf means letter. Harfu al kaf. Harfu al kaf. And now the original form at the beginning of the word. There is many ways how to write the kaf, and all ways are correct. And now at the middle of the word. And finally, at the end of the word. Let's continue. Here we have two examples from the first form of the letter kaf at the beginning of the word. As simple examples we have here 
the noun kalima kalima so fatha on kaf kasra under lam fatha on mim on sukun on ta marbuta kalima kalima means word and the word would be al kalima and the second example the adjective kabir kabir so fatha on kaf and sukun on ra kabir kabir means big and the big the big one means al kabir al kabir so we notice that al with the letter kaf of course lam qamaria al kalima al kabir on this slide we have the first example from above but with all sorts of tashkilat and tanween if you have not watched tashkilat or tanween's lecture or would like to watch it again you can refer to lecture one and three i explain them in detail there so the noun kalima is without al atarif so without an article so here tanween is used at the end of the word so that with tanween al fath kalima would be kalimatan with tanween al dham kalimatun and with tanween al kasr kalimatin as a reminder uh, when using tanween al fath add the letter alif at the end of the noun but here we didn't because the uh, word kalima is an exception because uh, the letter kalima ends with the letter ta marbuta so we don't add alif at the end so the noun al kalima is with al atarif so no longer uses tanween but we continue with tashkila so that al kalima with fatha at the end would be al kalimata with dhamma at the end al kalimatu or with kasra al kalimati now the second example kabir with tanween al fath would be kabiran we added here alif at the end that means this word kabir is regular and with tanween al dham kabirun or with tanween al kasr would be kabirin now kabir with al atarif is al kabir we don't use uh, tanween anymore but we continue with tashkila so that al kabir with fatha at the end would be al kabira and with dhamma at the end al kabiru or with kasra al kabiri now a video to show how the uh, write the examples Ka li ma kalima Now the second example Ka bir and as I said, there is uh, many ways to write kaf and all ways are correct. And now with al tarif would be al kabir. Let's move on. On this slide, we also have two examples, but from the second form of the letter kaf, which are very similar and indeed the most talked about stuff of this era, sukkar. Sukkar, dhamma on sin, fatha on kaf with shadda, and sukun on ra. Sukkar, sukkar means sugar, and the sugar would be a sukkar. A sukkar, sugar has an Arabic origin as you already know from the uh, tone of the word, and a sukkar, the lamb is uh, lam shamsia because the first letter in the word is seen and the second example the noun shukr shukr so dhamma on sheen sukun on kaf and sukun on ra 
shukr. Shukr means thank, and the thank would be a shukr. A shukr. So lam shamsia occurred here because the first letter in the word it is sheen. Looking at the two examples, you can clearly say that without the helpful dots, the Arabic words are difficult to recognize. So, the word sukkar is a noun without al atarif so without an article. Sukkar with tanween al fath would be sukkaran. We added here the alif at the end of sukkar, sukkaran. And with tanween al dham, sukkaron. And with tanween al kasr would be sukkarin. Now, a sukkar is with al atarif so that a sukkar with fatha at the end would be a sukkara. With dhamma at the end, a sukkaru. And with kasra, a sukkari. Now we take the second example, shukr. With tanween al fath would be shukran, here with alif. With tanween al dham, shukran. And with tanween al kasr, shukrin. Now, shukr with al at tarif is a shukr. With fatha at the end would be a shukra. With dhamma at the end, ash shukru. And with kasra at the end, ash shukri. Now, a video to show how to write the examples. Sukkar. Shu k r shukr Next we have two examples of the third form of kaf but at the end of the word which is the noun sharik sharik so fatha on sheen on sukun on kaf sharik sharik means partner in general but it can be used in reference to love partner or work partner or whatever and the partner would be a sharik a sharik so lam shamsia because the first letter in the word is sheen in the second example the invisible creature is malak Malak. So, fatha on meem and sukun on kaf. Malak. Malak means angel. And the angel would be al malak. Al malak. So, lam qamariya. Because the first letter in the word is meem. The kaf in the second example, malak, is irregular. Because kaf is at the end of the word and still takes the original form. Because the previous letter in the word is Aleph. And Aleph can only be connected to the previous letter but not to the next one, so partially. Here we have the first example from above, Sharik. With Tanween Al Fath would be Sharikan. Here we added the Aleph at the end. And with Tanween Al Dham, Sharikon. And with Tanween Al Kasr, Sharikan. Now, sharik with al at tarif is al sharik. We use tanween at the end so that al sharik with fatha would be al sharika with dhamma al shariku or with kasra at the end al shariki. Now, the second example, malak, is without al at tarif. So, with tanween al fath would be malakan. With tanween al dham malakun. And with tanween al kasr malakin. Now al malak is with al at tarif. So with fatha at the end would be al malaka. With dhamma at the end al malaku. And with kasra al malaki. 
Now a video to show how to write the examples. شريك شريك And now the second example. So ma la k malak, and with the tarif would be al malak. That's all regarding the letter Kaf, and finally we come to the grammatical part. Today we will continue to deal with the future tense. Returning to lecture number 8, we got to know the tenses of the verbs. Al-Af'al means the verbs, and their tenses are three. Either Madi means past, Mudari' means present, or Mustaqbal means future. In the previous lectures, however, we have always worked with the order of Madi, Mudari, and Amr. Well, when you uh, conjugate a verb in Arabic, you learn just like we practiced. Step 1, Madi, Step 2, Mudari, and Step 3, Amr. The Mustaqbal tense is usually learned separately as we will do today. So, the future tense has two ways to use it, either number one using the letter seen with fatha on it, or number two using the word sofa. Both represent future tense and we will work on the second one today. So letter sofa is marked as a letter although it consists of three letters, but the marking letter here is more of a description of the status of the word in the sentence, we can go into it in the future and discuss it in detail. But for now, it's good to know why sofa is a letter. Now the question arises when or uh, for what do I use the sofa in the future tense? There are actually a lot more than two differences, but uh, the main reasons are two for the relatively distant future and or more openly spoken. I will be a technician in three years or I will travel to Turkey. So the attention is here, but it's for the distant future and or there is no plan or there are no steps to insert the statement. Now the question, uh, how do I use the sofa in the sentence? The usage is very simple. Sofa is put in front of the verb conjugated in present tense, but not added. For a better understanding today, we will take a verb of the third kind and work with it. As a reminder, the third category of verbs called al khumasi and this category includes all verbs whose letters in Madi are five. Now on this slide we have the verb of the third category Al-Intisar means to triumph We have already conjugated this verb in our series in Madi, Mudari and Amr But now we needed the verb conjugation in Mudari and then we convert it to Mustaqbal As a reminder this verb in Madi is Intasara In Mudari Yantasiru and in Amr, Intasir. We notice the verb in Madi consists of five letters, namely Alif, Noon, Ta, Sad, and Ra. Let's continue. 
Now on this slide we start conjugating the verb in mustaqbal so in future tense Number one we have Ana sawfa antasiru Ana sawfa antasiru means I will triumph Number two Anta sawfa tantasiru Anta sawfa tantasiru means you will triumph for singular masculine Number three Anti سوف تنتصرين أنت سوف تنتصرين means you will triumph for singular feminine and number four أنتما سوف تنتصران أنتما سوف تنتصران means you will triumph for two persons masculine or feminine and now the video أ ن س و ف أ ن ت ص ر أنا سوف أنتصر أ ن ت س و ف ت ن ت ص ر أنت سوف تنتصر sorry So, a, n, t, s, u, f, t, n, t, s, r, i, n, anti, sauf, tantasirina. So, a, n, tu, ma, sa, u, fa, ta, n, ta, si, ra, ni, antuma, sawfa, tantasirani. Let's move on. Here we have number five. Antum, sawfa, tantasiruna. Antum, sawfa, tantasiruna. Means you will triumph for plural masculine. Number six, Antuna sofa tantasirna. Antuna sofa tantasirna means you will triumph for plural feminine. Number seven, Hua sofa yantasiru. Hua sofa yantasiru means he will triumph. And number eight, here sofa. تنتصر هي سوف تنتصر means she will triumph and now the video
a m t o m s u f t n t s i r u n a a n t u m s u f a t a n t s i r u n a We make a line here. A, n, t, n, s, u, f, t, n, t, s, r, n. Antunna sawfa tantasirna. هو و س و ف ي ن ت ص ي ر هو سوف ينتصر He, ya, sorry, yes, not correct. Sofa, tan, ta, si, ru. Let's move on. On this slide, we have number nine. Nahnu, sofa, nan, tasiru. Nahnu, sofa, nan, tasiru. Means we will triumph. Number ten. Hom, sofa. ينتصرون هم سوف ينتصرون means they will triumph for plural masculine number 11 هن سوف ينتصرن هن سوف ينتصرن means they will triumph for plural feminine and number 12 هما سوف ينتصران هما سوف ينتصران means they will triumph for two persons masculine and finally number 13 هما سوف تنتصران هما سوف تنتصران means they will triumph for two persons but for feminine and now the video ن ن س و ف ن ن ت ص ر نحن سوف ننتصر So, ho, m, sa, u, fa, ya, n, ta, si, ru, na, hom, sofa, yan, ta, si, ru, na.
ho n sa o fa ya n ta si r n hunna sawfa yantasirna we make a line now We write to uh, both verbs, yantasirani and tantasirani, in a one word with the difference between them. So, hu, ma, sa, u, fa, ya, n, ta, Sirani or huma sofa ta n ta sirani. That's it for this lecture. To practice writing the letter kaf, I have attached a PDF file in the info box below. You can print it out and then take your time to practice writing with it. I have also prepared a small quiz which you can also print out. And finally, I summarize the content of the lecture in a third document. I hope that the lecture was easy and understandable for you. So, good luck and see you next time.